All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, better known as Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. And I'm your brother, Matazat Bath, back again. And um, this is a video dedicated to one of the Akim who requested a breakdown on Isaiah, the 20, uh, 24th chapter. All right. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. And this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 24. And we're going to start at the top. All right. Now, this whole chapter is dealing with the judgment that's coming on the planet Earth. All right. But there's some stuff in here that jumps back and forth um, that we have to break down so we can get the understanding. So let's get into it. Isaiah, chapter 24, verse one. Behold, the Lord, Yahweh maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof, right? Because the Heavenly Father tells you when you get Isaiah, the 13th chapter, as a precept, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11, it says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the trouble, all right? So we know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? When the time comes, all right, the, the, the earth is going to, you know, get that judgment. Also, we can precept that in the book of uh, Second Edris. Let's grab that real quick. The 16th chapter. All right. Start at verse. Uh, <clears throat> or really, you can start at the top, but uh, we'll start at verse three. It says a sword is sent upon you and who may turn it back. All right. Because when you read up in verse one, it says, woe be unto the uh, woe be unto thee, Salakia. Babylon and Asia will be unto the Egypt and Syria. All right. Babylon, Egypt and Syria is synonymous to America today. All right. Asia obviously is uh, literal. All right. He's talking about Asia, China and all of them. Right. Verse four says a fire is sent among you and who may quench it. Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? All right. So when you drop down to verse 12, it says the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof, the sea ariseth up with the waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. That's talking about the ICBM missiles. All right. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. All right. So you can also precept that to understand the judgment that's coming. Isaiah chapter 24, verse two, and it shall be as with the people. So with the priest, as with the servant, so with the so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. All right. And this is talking about everyone. All right. Verse three. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled for the Lord. Yahweh have spoken this word and that land is talking about America. America will utterly be destroyed. Verse four, the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Now, when people read this verse, they get a little choked up because when it says the earth mourneth and fadeth away, they think that the whole earth is going to be destroyed. But that's not so, because when you get Ecclesiastes, all right, uh, let's see here. Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse four. All right. The Bible tells you that the, uh, the earth abided forever. Ecclesiastes one and four. One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. You see that? So going back in Isaiah, the 24th chapter, verse four. All right. When it's talking about is really is talking about America, Babylon, a great. All right. It's going to fade away. All right. Now, you also going to have different parts of the earth that's going to be destroyed. All right. Not completely wiped off the face of the earth like America, but different parts of Europe will be, you know, uh, destroyed from the war. But it's going to be rebuilt back up in the kingdom. All right. So continuing on verse five, it says the earth also is defiled. Under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Now, let's get a precept to back that up. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82, and verse 5. 
It says they they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All right. And ever since these devils have come into power, that's the one thing that that, that they've done. They changed the ordinances and everything. All right. Also, we can precept that to the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse uh, 18. It says, and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in a time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. All right. Plain and simple. So back to Isaiah, the 24th chapter. OK, verse six, therefore, have the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. And this is talking about the destruction that's coming, starting with the uh, ICBM missiles. All right. Which is the indignation of the Lord. OK. The new wine mourneth. The vine languisheth, all the merry hearted do sigh. Verse 8 The mirth of the tabret sees, seizeth, the noise of them that rejoice in it, the joy of the harp seizeth. All right. Because what you got to understand is, um, well, actually, we'll keep reading it because it's going to explain itself in the very, uh, very next couple of verses. Verse 9 It says, They shall not drink wine with a song, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Verse 10 The city of confusion. Is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. All right. Now, the city of confusion represents America, which is modern day Babylon. OK, because when you get the word Babylon, which goes back to Babel. All right. Let's, let's grab that. Babel means confusion. OK. And uh, let me see here. I think it's in the uh, previous chapter. <laughs> yep. Now, when you look up that word Babel. OK. It actually means confusion. You see that? So the city of confusion. All right. Which is America today, which is known as uh, Babylon the Great. All right. So let's go back and read that again. Isaiah 24 and verse 10, it says the city of confusion is broken down. All right. And that's talking about America. OK. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. All right. That's talking about quarantines because it's going to come a time. All right. Second address is the 16th chapter where they're going to declare martial law. Right. Let's see here. Uh, let's grab real quick. Actually, it's the chapter before. Uh, this is second address 15. And let's see. Second Edgers, chapter 15. And let's see, might be. Here it is right here. I went too far down. Second Edgers 15 and we'll start at verse 15 for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. All right. And we're we're fastly approaching that time right now for there should be sedition among men invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions shall stand in that power. Right. Because you got a lot of pushback from a lot of these nations around the world that are standing up against their governments that are standing up against their leaders, politicians. Uh, and eventually, you know, like you have certain. Um, Countries that are trying to overthrow their government, which they call coops, right? Verse 17, here's the point. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? Because eventually martial law will be declared. All right. When you start to get the people to rise up. All right. Which that's what the, you know, top elites do. All right. In order to gain control of the masses of the people, what do they do? They cause a diversion. All right. Which we know we call that wag the dog or a false flag attempt. They create the problem. All right. And then they give the solution to the problem. So it's going to come a time to where they're going to set up. All right. Something to where the people are going to bite off of it. All right. It's going to be pandemonium out here in these streets. And that's going to give them the go ahead to declare martial law. And then they will set up what they want to set up, which is their one world government. 
Verse 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. And this is what's coming. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So it's, it's like I said, it's going to be total pandemonium and chaos. All right. So going back. Let's read it again. Isaiah 24, 10, the city of confusion is broken down, which is talking about America. Once again, every house is shut up. Now, you know why it's shut up, because sedition among men, martial law, and they're going to be setting up quarantines that no man may come in. All right. Because the quarantines is going to be a representation where they're going to declare that in order for you to um, take part. All right. Within their system, if they detect that you have the, you know, um, how can I say for lack of better terms, you, you got that it factor that was declared back in 2020, right? That it factor. OK. And if it, and if you seem to be a, a threat to society, they're going to quarantine you off and then they're going to try to give you that C hip. All right. From the concentration camps. Right. Verse 11. There is cry. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. OK. The, the wine represents uh, wisdom. All right. So when all hell breaks loose and destruction comes upon Babylon, the great, which is America, you're going to have everybody that's going to be crying for help and crying for wisdom, knowledge and understanding as to what's going on. That's why it tells you in Isaiah chapter 33. All right. In verse six, it says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh, is his treasure. But see, we coming upon a time to where if you don't have this truth, all right, when Jacob's trouble come pertaining to Jeremiah chapter uh, 30, verse seven, you're going to fit this prophecy right here. There is a crying for wine in the streets. OK, because people are going to be losing their marbles when destruction comes. Why is this happening? Why? Where, where's God? Somebody help me. Well, well, nobody talked about this. No, the prophets have been out here prophesying. OK. Telling you the destruction. OK, matter of fact, let's let's back that up with Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. OK, even the prophets of old have prophesied. This is Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse eight. It says the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war, of evil and and of pestilence. You see? Uh, so you got to understand that. That's why it also tells you there was another precept of all. Oh, there it is right there. Call Halal Yimla Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Ezekiel 33. All right. And verse 33, it says, And when this cometh to pass, and lo, it will come. Okay. Everything, the prophecies that's written in this book, then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. All right. So if you out there, you know, in that situation where you're crying for wisdom. All right. You're crying for that wine. OK. There's nothing you can really do about it, man, because you've you you got the chance during your grace period to get the word. And I'm talking to you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans to the rest of the heathen. It really don't matter because whether you're either going to be destroyed or you're going to be saved for slavery in the kingdom. Verse 12. It says in the city, which is talking about America, is left desolation and a gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. <clears throat> now, the shaking in the midst of the land obviously is talking about the destruction. All right. It says they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord Yahweh. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Who is this talking about? Read the very next verse. Wherefore, glorify ye the Lord Yahweh in the fires, even the name of the Lord Yahweh, thy power of Israel in the isles of the sea. Now, this is talking about the elect, because when the elect is beamed up, when you get Revelation, the 15 chapter, this is what's going to happen. <clears throat> it says a scene of heaven. Revelation 15 to one. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up with the wrath of the most high. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, which represents the destruction on Babylon the great. 
and them that have gotten the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. This the breakdown for this is talking about the elect that got the victory over the beast, which represents NATO and EU. America sits at top, uh, sits on top of that over his image represents the image of uh, ancient Roman Empire. OK, because America is the revival of the ancient Roman Empire from its laws, its uh, architecture, destruction of its stadiums. OK, it has a Senate. It deals with a president, which all goes back to ancient Rome, which represents the image of ancient Rome. OK, and over his, uh, you know, over his M.A.R.K., the C hip and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass. Right. The sea of glass represents the elect being on a chariot looking through the window of the chariot, looking down on the destruction of Babylon. OK, having the harps of the most high. Verse three. And they sang the song of Moses, which is that uh, which to the, the scriptures calls the new song. OK, because what's the song? Us being delivered from our enemies. OK, Yahweh Shai coming to to save us, starting with the elect. Right. It says, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of the most high and the song of the lamb saying, great and marvelous are thy works. Uh, Lord, uh, thy power almighty, just and true are thy ways. Thou king of saints who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name for thou only art holy for all nations shall come and worship before thee for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. All right. So that's what that's going into. Back to Isaiah, the 24th chapter. All right. Now it says here, verse 16, from the uttermost part of the earth, have we heard songs, even glory, glory to the righteous. Once again, that's talking about that new song. OK, that we're singing, prophesying. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, which means wasteness. Woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt tre very treacherously. OK, talking about Esau, Edom. OK, and really all these heathen nations, but mainly Esau, Edom, because he has dealt treacherously. All right. He has deceived many nations. Verse 17, fear in the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. What that noise of fear represents those missiles. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake because it tells you. All right. When this time comes and, and it's, it's fastly approaching Isaiah chapter two, verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord Yahweh and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. All right. So it's going to come a time to where these devils, they're going to go into the rocks. But see, even when the destruction hits, when you get Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, the Lord is going to send the elect fishers of the elect to go and hunt them out of the, uh, the holes. You see, Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send forth many fishers, said the Lord Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Why is that? Go to Revelation, the sixth chapter. OK, you got to put it all together. Precept upon precept. Right. Uh. Revelation 16 and 15, we'll start at verse 15. It says, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. All right. The hose of the rocks is talking about the bunkers. Okay which is going on today. You can pull up articles where it tells you that these elites are running into bunkers. OK, so that's what it's talking about. So going back, let's finish this up. OK. Eight verse 18 again, Isaiah chapter 24. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in a snare. All right, because even when they run, OK, no, no matter, you know, 
if they run from it or whatever, either way, they're still going to be either put to death, caught up or, you know, they're going to be saved uh, for slavery. OK, so they're going to be that snare represents a trap for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. Talking about the missiles. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Why? Read the very next verse. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and shall fall and not rise again. Once again, what's going to make the earth rock to and fro? It's talking about the missiles because it tells you in Revelation, the ninth chapter, 200,000 thousand, which represents 200 million uh, warheads is going to hit America. So when you imagine that many warheads on a missile that's going to strike America. OK. And we just read in Second Edges, the 16th chapter, that the Heavenly Father, when he shoots his arrows from one end of the earth to the other end, they will not miss. So when those missiles hit America. All right. At the end of the day, it's going to be so dev uh, devastating that the earth is going to rock to and fro. OK. And it's going to cause uh, tsunamis. It's going to cause earthquakes. All of that. OK. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord Yahweh shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the uh, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. Because who sits on high? Let's get Obadiah chapter one, starting at verse three. It says the pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down? See, these devils, the Edomites, they're the ones that sit on high. OK, verse four, though thou exalt thyself as an eagle and though thou set thy nest above the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord Yahweh, because who's sitting in the in a driver's seat? Let's get Job chapter nine, verse 24. OK, it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? And we know pertaining to Malachi, the first chapter, who is the wicked? Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord, Yahweh hath indignation forever. OK, so that's the. The punishment of the high ones. All right. Esau, Edom. All right. Verse 22, Isaiah 24 and 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in prison. And after many days, they shall be visited. Why is that? Because all of them are going into slavery. All right. Let's get uh, Psalms 149. Starting at verse six. <laughs> It says, let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth. Talking about the uh, the saints, starting with the elect and a two edged sword in their hand to do what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. All right. So this time is coming. Salakia. All right. So back to Isaiah 24, last verse 23. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord Yahweh of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients glorious. All right. Because it tells you, I believe in uh, I think it's in Revelation. I could be wrong. I got to check that. But it tells you that when we are put back into the land or actually, I think it's in the same book, Isaiah. That is that because when we are changed in our uh, spiritual bodies and Yahweh Shai, the, the heavenly father through Yahweh Shai is going to be that beacon of light. All right. To the point to where the, the sun and the moon will still be here. But the kingdom of heaven, which is which the headquarters is going to be in Jerusalem. We're going to be that beacon of light. So when it talks about the moon shall be confounded, the sun and shame it's not talking about that. There's not going to be any more moon or. Or, or sun. No, because the, the scriptures tells you that. Let me see if I can grab that. I think that's Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Let 
Let me see real quick. Yeah, Jeremiah 10 and 2. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. Right. So anytime we get stuff like eclipses, right, full moons, bloody moons, all of that sort of nonsense, the heathens, they don't know about that. They don't know that pertaining to Genesis, the first chapter, all of that was given for times, signs, seasons, wonders and stuff like that. OK, that's why it talks about it's going to be confounded. Because they're going to look to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. He's going to be that light. All right. So with that, okay, uh, that wraps up, you know, the breakdown to uh, Isaiah, the 24th chapter. Lord's will, it was edifying until the next time. Shalom.